We want to welcome to the show Rosalie Contrite of the Contrite Catholic. Rosalie, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I feel really honored. Wonderful. So we want to talk to you a little bit about your podcast, but I, first I want you to tell me a, your conversion story. You, were, you described yourself as a militant atheist. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I was the kind of atheist who wasn't just happy enough to have someone like, oh, you believe and I don't, and that's fine. No, I needed to come at them. I was very almost anti-Catholic, so I had a lot of issues with the church. Okay, and how are you now a Catholic? Explain how you got from there to here. Well, it was really interesting. Um, I was actually living with my boyfriend, and we went into a shop to get a gift for somebody, and it was a Catholic shop. And the woman who owned it walked up to me, and she's like, are you Catholic? And it sort of started a conversation. And I was like, no, I'm not. Um, and I told her all the reasons why, and I thought she was going to kick me out. Um, but she wasn't. She had really great answers, and that's something I had never had in my life. Good, solid answers. Wow. And so that started getting you to think about some things? Yes. She gave me several books. I've probably read, I don't know, 500 books on Catholicism, like it does a topic, different topics. And it's um, deeper and more rich than I could have ever imagined. And it is not what I thought it was. Wow. So how many years ago did you convert to the Catholic faith? Um, so I... Um, my family, like growing up, I was baptized Catholic. I would say we were culturally Catholic, okay. but I myself um, never believed. Um, and my mother passed away when I was 13, and that really solidified it for me, my atheism. And that went on until I was probably um, in college. So I've been Catholic for maybe seven years now. Okay. And so mm -hmm. after that encounter with the woman in the bookstore, you started kind of being open to the idea of practicing your faith again, did you just simply start going back to mass or did you have other things going on at that time as well? Well, you know, um, she gave me a gift. It was kind of step by step. She gave me a gift that day because I said a statue of Mary reminded me of my mother and she just gave it to me. And, I, and she's like, I'll give it to you, but you need to get it blessed. And I'll give you a priest. You need to go see him. And he was um, very young, not like I was expecting at all. I expected to be sent to like a hundred year old man who couldn't hear me talk. And he was young and he was really entertaining and charismatic and he had great answers and he was not afraid of any topics. And that really um, propelled the the transition. But the first thing I did was go back to confession and it had been like 10, 15 years. I don't know. And that was a huge weight off my shoulders. Wow. Okay. So now you have a podcast, The Contrite Catholic. Tell us about that. Okay. So um, it started out, I was blogging. Uh, I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. And um, it just, somebody said, oh, you should do a podcast because you have such a dynamic voice and all this stuff. And so I just started that recently um, and I got in touch with this company, uh, Breadbox Media. And so they also feature my podcast and have kind of gotten me my start that way. Wonderful. What kind of topics do you like to cover? Oh, we cover everything. We have, we have some racier topics. Um, We've talked, we talk about NFP, marriage, parenting, anything. We, um, I think that every topic is a Catholic topic in the sense that we can't separate a part of our life from our faith. And I think that's part of the show for me, really. Wonderful. Yeah. Why is it so important, do you think, to have Catholic voices out there having these conversations? I think it's really important, something... I strive for on the show is to be really unedited and honest. And I think if you're looking for really great put together resources, they're out there, but I don't think there are a lot of people who are off the cuff and just kind of, Hey, I'm a mess, but I'm real. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always important. I think that really can minister to people to see people who are willing to just be honest and, and out there instead of overly polished, you know, in a way that seems um, unrealistic. What words would you offer to somebody who's dealing, you know, with a family member, a loved one who's sort of drifted away from the faith? How do you handle that in a, in a good way? Um, I think with atheists, the first way thing to start with is 
to get them to realize that it is possible that there is a God. Doesn't even have to be the Christian God. And that was where it really started for me too. I needed to understand that something has never come from nothing. That's never happened. Mm -hmm. And once I started there, I was like, okay, there is a God. Then I moved to which one's the right one. And so I think you don't get ahead of yourself. There's a process there that they need to go through. Did you find when you were kind of in, in your years of being an atheist that people um, were afraid of that? Or did you feel like people would be combative with you? I think uh, a lot of the friends from back then I don't have, um, they didn't want to hear it. And it wasn't that they disagreed with it or they had good arguments. It was where I was, which is if this is the truth, then I have to change the way that I am, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy that you found your way back home and that you're willing to share your story and encourage other Catholics, and I just pray that God continues to bless your efforts. Thank you for being with us on the show today, Rosalie. Yes, thank you.